Welcome to our War Within Retribution Paladin starter video. Whether you're a veteran player, eager to get ahead in the new expansion, or you're just curious about the latest changes for Retribution Paladins, well, then this video is for you. We're going to be covering everything that you need to hit the ground running, including a look at what's new for Paladins in War Within, the top talent choices, the best gear loadouts, the most optimal races, and as a bonus here, we're also going to include some essential macros that you won't want to be without. And if you are ready to dominate in the War Within, our brand new update to the skill capped add-on has just dropped, giving skill capped members the best UI for PvP with just one click. We've partnered with the world's best players to ensure the skill capped UI is ready for every class in the War Within and to bring you exclusive guides that unlock the full potential of your class. From maximizing damage to perfecting crowd control and outsmarting opponents with the latest tech, we've got you covered. While everyone else is just confused, you can instantly get ahead of the curve with our guides, which are designed to fast track your progress and put you miles ahead of the competition. We're even so confident in our service that we guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating or you're gonna get your money back. So why wait? Click the link in the description below now and join SkillCap today. Now, if you enjoyed previous iterations of Retribution Paladin, well, then you're in luck as the War Within has kept more or less the same playstyle, just with some minor tweaks and some slight improvements. Now, historically, and something seasoned Retribution Paladins are really going to know all too well, is the simple fact that we've just always been way too reliant on our avenging wrath to get anything done. Now, <laughs> I don't know if this is just me here, but this has always resulted in a very bland playstyle with every single game just kind of following more or less the same exact script. You'd pop avenging wrath, you'd set off a load of air horns and weak auras, your opponents would press literally every defensive under the sun in order to survive and throw every single crowd control your way. Then once your avenging wrath expired, you may as well not even exist for the next couple of minutes. Well, allow me to introduce to you the first and most exciting new addition to the War Within, Radiant Glory. This talent replaces your standard avenging wrath or crusade and it grants you the effects for 8 or 10 seconds respectively every 30 seconds after using Wake of Ashes. In addition to also granting us a chance to proc Avenging Wrath for half that duration whenever spending Holy Power. Now, you don't need me to tell you the effects of this talent are massive. Having access to Avenging Wrath far more frequently not only massively enhances our sustain pressure, but it also grants us much more reliable burst windows, allowing us to fit any number of compositions, which is obviously the perfect fit for a format like Solo Shuffle. But if that wasn't exciting enough though, just wait until you see how this interacts with our hero talents. So while the standard Paladin and Retribution talent trees remain for the most part identical to Dragonflight, the main focal point of the War Within and where most of the new stuff comes from is from the introduction of what's called hero talents, with every class having two hero talent trees to choose from. For Paladins, this is Herald of the Sun and Templar. Herald of the Sun introduces a powerful new passive ability called Dawnlight. Dawnlight is a potent damage over time effect that's applied to the target via your next two holy power spenders after using Wake of Ashes and to nearby enemies when activating Avenging Wrath. And yes, this also synergizes with Radiant Glory. Dawnlight also then radiates a portion of its damage to nearby enemies. Now, additionally, while Avenging Wrath is active, you become linked to any active Dawnlights with these beams that you see here, dealing significant damage or healing to any enemies or allies that pass through them. Now, the second hero talent tree, Templar, is vastly different. While Herald of the Sun focuses on sustained damage, Templar is all about burst. If you enjoyed the burst aspect of Retribution and Dragonflight, just wait until you see what Templar can do. The centerpiece of this tree is Light Guidance. After using Wake of Ashes, Light Guidance grants you access to Hammer of Light, a powerful 5 holy power cost finisher 
that deals massive damage to the target and up to four nearby enemies. After using Wake of Ashes, Light's Guidance grants you access to Hammer of Light, a powerful 5 Holy Power cost finisher that deals massive damage to the target and up to four nearby enemies. Now, this ability, as you could probably already guess, synergizes incredibly well with Radiant Glory, as each time you use Wake of Ashes to gain access to Hammer of Light, your Avenging Wrath will already be active. The other aspect of this tree is Empyrean Hammers, which spawn and deal damage to the target and nearby enemies every time you use one of your damaging Holy Power Spenders, with Hammer of Light providing multiple. Aside from the extra damage, these stack up to 60 and allow you to cast Hammer of Light an additional time. Ultimately, our Herald of the Sun talent tree does look to be highly favored in the meta, and when paired with Crusade as one of our Retribution talents, expect to deal some pretty heavy single-target burst while weaving in some AoE spread pressure. But now that we have a basic understanding of what these trees offer, it's time to delve deeper and discuss how to best allocate our new hero talent points, specifically for Herald of the Sun. But before we get into it though, we do want to remind you about our free article site which has just been updated for The War Within. As always, with the start of the new expansion, things can quickly change on a dime, so we're going to be keeping all of the information found in this guide up to date in our article, and have also included talent import strings there too, so do be sure to visit the link in the description below after this. Alright, let's get back into the video. Now, on the left side of the tree, the first choice you're met with is Morning Star or Gleaming Rays, in which the latter seems like a no-brainer here. Flat out 5% extra damage is honestly just way too good to pass up, and it synergizes amazingly well with the Aurora talent slightly below, granting us a Divine Purpose proc every time we activate Wake of Ashes. Going back up one note here, we have the choice between Illumine or Will of the Dawn. Now, although the additional movement speed from Will of the Dawn could be good in games where you're not the target, it's honestly rare that we're not. Now, with that in mind, as Dawnlight has such high uptime here, having a passive 50% slow attached to it is just way too good to pass up. So going down the middle, we then have Eternal Flame. This simply is going to replace your Word of Glory with an enhanced version having an attached heal over time and additional healing when used on yourself. Then we have another choice, Blessing of Anshi or Lingering Radiance. The latter is honestly much more favored toward Holy Paladin, and as such we highly suggest picking up Blessing of the Anshi. This will grant damage over time effects, including the likes of Expurgation and Dawnlight, a chance to proc an Empowered Hammer of Wrath. Dropping down, we then have Solar Grace. You apply Dawnlight, you gain haste, nothing more, nothing less. Moving over to the right side of the tree now, the first talent is Luminosity, simply providing some extra crit chance on both Divine Storm and Hammer of Wrath. Synergizing with Blessing of An Shi from earlier, as well as Empyrean Legacy in the Retribution Tree. Thanks to our next node, whenever they critically strike, these same two abilities will also cause the target to take some additional damage over 4 seconds, which is, again, just another way to proc Blessing of Anshi. Now with the final talent on the right side of the tree being Second Sunrise, giving these same two abilities a chance to replicate at lower effectiveness. Finally, the end capstone for Herald of the Sun is Sun's Avatar. This is what enables you to apply Dawnlight whenever you activate Avenging Wrath or Crusade, as well as also extending the duration. Then, like we covered earlier, while wings are active, you'll also become linked to any active Dawnlights, dealing extra damage to anybody who passes through. And remember, you can find exclusive tips in our brand new class courses at skillcap.com where we're going to be releasing new guides every week throughout The War Within. Skillcap members can also unlock premium profiles ready for The War Within in the Skillcap add-on. So don't miss out. Use the link in the description to start gaining rating today. Alright, with the new additions covered, let's quickly go over what we're currently suggesting for your Retribution and Paladin talent trees. Now, as you can see, these remain mostly untouched from Dragonflight, with what's on the Paladin side of the tree being a good default setup for both Templar and Herald of the Sun. 
Briefly touching on some of the highlights here, we have Fist of Justice for that hefty reduction on our stun, Greater Judgment, which introduces the gameplay loop of applying judgment prior to using any finishers, Unbound Freedom, so we can still provide some mobility for our team while making use of it ourselves, and the Divine Toll and Divine Resonance combo for that extra burst and holy power generation every minute. But if you play Dragonflight, this tree is practically identical aside from the removal of Crusader's Reprieve. On the Retribution side, there is a small amount of change, with what's on screen now being the suggested default talents. Some of the major highlights here are nice buffs to Boundless Judgment, which now, in addition to generating one extra holy power, will also have a much higher chance at proccing our mastery for even more range damage. Holy Flames, which causes our free Divine Storms from Empyrean Legacy to spread expurgation and increase our holy damage by a further 3% to any targets affected. Then we've of course got all of the must-have talents that you may be familiar with from Dragonflight, such as Final Reckoning, for that huge on-demand burst damage and big boost to our finishers, Crusading Strikes, which removes Crusader Strike from the rotation, while still contributing good damage and holy power, and the must-have Jurisdiction, increasing the range of our final verdict to 20 yards. However, we absolutely recommend trying out Radiant Glory, as it has the potential to be an extremely strong talent. When choosing to play with Radiant Glory, you're going to have to remove Divine Wrath because it doesn't work with Radiant Glory. Aside from Radiant Glory, you may find at times that you'll want more AoE spread pressure against teams that constantly stack, predominantly melee cleaves. This makes Consecrated Ground and Burning Crusade more beneficial to pick up instead of Zealot's Fervor, increasing the amount of damage mainly from your Radiant Damaging spells and makes Consecration more effective as it snares any opponent affected by it. Now, on the Paladin side of the tree, you have several options for customization. You can swap Blinding Light for Repentance if you need more crowd control, Divine Purpose instead of Vengeful Wrath if you want less execute damage from Hammer of Wrath and more consistent throughput. Cleanse Toxins can be situationally strong against specs like Shadow Priest that heavily rely on diseases for their damage. Seasoned Warhorse is a good choice into matchups where extra mobility is necessary. Lastly, Turn Evil may be valuable if DK or Warlock pets are causing issues. To accommodate these choices, you can reallocate points from Sacrifice of the Just or Blessing of Protection, depending on what makes the most sense. However, with talent picks and builds frequently changing throughout the season, we strongly recommend checking out our article page to stay updated on the best builds for the current meta. The final step in setting up our talent loadout is discussing PvP talents. Here we have two talents that really never change. Blessing of Sanctuary and Aura of Reckoning. Blessing of Sanctuary by itself is an absolute must-have, as the crowd control removal is always going to provide you value. Now on the other hand, Aura of Reckoning does provide us with relatively frequent access to wings, and it really can help to extend Crusade when playing. We're then left with one extra slot, with those choices being based really on the matchup at hand. Blessing of Spell Warding is a must-have pickup against any double caster composition or even certain caster melee comps. Hallowed Ground can also be an option for a small boost to mobility if needed, and although unlikely, Searing Glare can provide some nice outplay potential, causing enemies to miss their attacks for 4 seconds, but as it's a cast time, it's very unlikely to get value. Overall though, if you don't have a clear choice in mind for this third slot, we suggest picking up Luminescence, as you can never go wrong with some free damage and some free healing. Alright, now that we understand the optimal talent choices and the reasoning behind them, the next goal is setting up our character. The first step in this process is going to be deciding on a race. The first and most offensive option here is human, and although the racial will to survive has seen some substantial nerfs over the years, it still does have its benefits, as you have the option to pick up both an insignia and a badge while still being able to escape stuns every three minutes. Now, even then though, you can still equip a medallion, it'll just put will to survive on a 90 second cooldown. Not to mention, going human, you're still going to get access to the human spirit for a little extra boost to secondary stats. If you're bored of human though and potentially want something new to try, you can opt for the new race in the War Within, Earthen, 
providing you with some additional armor from gear you equip, as well as ingest materials, which is going to grant you a small boost to our favorite stat of versatility. Dark Iron Dwarf also remains a solid pickup too. This is due to the racial Fireblood, offering a good mix of offense and defense. And finally, if you can handle the aesthetics, Torin continues to be another strong pick, enabling you to utilize the additional stun from War Stomp during your burst windows for some added kill potential. Overall though, none of the races really stand out above the others, so honestly, just pick the race that you really enjoy looking at the most. With race out of the way, let's take a look at what's shaping up to be your best in-slot gear for Season 1. But first, since you'll likely find upgrades along the way, let's discuss stat priority. Our main focus should be on versatility and mastery. Versatility is a no-brainer. We get targeted almost every single game, and it's an excellent stat for PvP overall. Mastery, however, is set to become much stronger in War Within with the introduction of talents like Boundless Judgment, significantly boosting your overall DPS. Followed by Mastery, Haste is a solid addition to our character as it reduces our global cooldown, allowing us to spend our globals quicker in order to generate our Hammer of Justice back slightly faster, and it reduces the cooldown on some of our other core damaging abilities such as Judgment and Blade of Justice. Lastly, Critical Strike does not synergize well with our toolkit, therefore making it our weakest stat. But if Avenging Wrath Might ever makes a return, we definitely see this stat being ranked a little bit higher. We should aim to acquire the PvP 4 set bonus as soon as possible, with the exception of Lex. This piece should be either Algari crafted with Verse and Mastery, or if you want your character to be a little bit tankier, use the Forged Gladiator's Plate Tassus. For every slot that we can, we want to be crafting with versatility and mastery, but if you're worried about your survivability, opt for some conquest pieces instead, which include legs and any off pieces. And even applies to our jewelry too, where we need at least one crafted ring with mastery and versatility. Our weapon will also be crafted, and for our trinket, we're going to use the insignia and medallion as our typical standard. Alternatively, you can use the On Use badge to add on to your burst damage with Final Reckoning. If you're playing as a human, you can opt out of the PvP medallion to use both an Insignia and an On Use badge if you prefer. Now, let's get everything enchanted. For your cloak, you'll want Chant of Leeching Fangs. For chest, Crystalline Radiance. Bracers, Chant of Armored Leech. Legs, Stormbound Armor Kit. Boots, Scout's March, or Planes Runner's Breeze. And then for your rings, grab Radiant Versatility for both. Finally, the last enchant is for your weapon, where we suggest getting Authority of Radiant Power. Due to the addition of the Vicious Jewelers setting, you'll now be able to add gems to your helmet, amulet, rings, belt, and bracers. One of these can be one of three unique PvP-specific gems. Out of these, we highly recommend two that you can choose depending on your preference. Enduring Bloodstone for additional survivability, or Determined Bloodstone as a minor, stackable damage boost, supplementing your damage on your next attack after being snared. For the rest of your gym slots, the Masterful Sapphire provides the best overall boost to your favorite stats. And as for your embellishments, you want to use Dark Moon Sigil Ascension on your weapon and Writhing Armor Banding on any of your crafted armor pieces, providing us a solid boost to our secondary stats when it procs, but do be sure to check out our article linked in the description below to stay up to date with these decisions as the season progresses. Finally, let's wrap things up with a look at some must-have macros for Retribution. First, we suggest having focus macros for all of your important crowd control, enabling you to CC off targets without the need to deselect your current target. So that's Hammer of Justice, Rebuke, and Repentance. If you've played Retribution before, you're likely familiar with the awkwardness of having to click to aim Final Reckoning mid-burst sequence. This macro removes that reticle entirely and instead casts Final Reckoning at your current cursor location. We've also included your Forged Gladiator's Badge in this macro as its cooldown aligns perfectly. This will streamline your burst rotation, making it much smoother and more efficient. While not necessary, our next macro offers a nice quality of life improvement by allowing you to seamlessly swap between your two main auras with just a single button. 
As a Retribution Paladin, you have a heavy focus on utility. One way to streamline this process is with Party 1 and Party 2 macros. If you're unfamiliar with these, Party 1 refers to the person at the top of your party frames, and Party 2 is the second person. The basic way of doing this is what you see on screen now, where you'll need two macros for each ability exactly like the example that you can see on screen now. The most important abilities to have these four being Word of Glory, Lay on Hands, Blessing of Freedom, Blessing of Sanctuary, Blessing of Sacrifice, and Flash of Light. You could also do this for Cleanse Toxins, but it's far, far, far less important. For Blessing of Protection, we recommend using this macro, which will automatically use either Blessing of Protection or Blessing of Spell Warding, depending on your talents. Same as before, you'll need one of these for each party member. As binds will more than likely become an issue, one way to make this requirement a little bit easier is with shift modifiers like the one you see on screen now. This will use the ability on party one, and then if you hold shift and press the same bind, it's gonna instead use it on party two. You can replace Blessing of Sacrifice with whatever utility spell you want. All right, guys, that is just about everything you will ever need to get started in the War Within. And remember this, Skillcapped is the only service that guarantees you'll climb at least 400 rating. Now, we make this promise because Skillcapped really does work. And if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Think of it like a gym membership that guarantees you'll get ripped. Crazy, right? So get started today by clicking on the link in the description. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.